In this video, I want to talk with you about something that God is talking with me about today, and that is regarding how we validate ourselves. How are we affirming ourselves and understanding whether we're doing what's right? And having lived in the world and been raised in this world for a certain amount of time, we have a tendency to validate ourselves as the world validates with rewards of the world or punishments of the world. And those are based on the standards and the rules of the world, right? And so when we went to, you know, mandatory education, for example, we were taught that we would be rewarded based on performance. And that performance was based on carnality. Our carnal brain's ability to receive input of information and then regurgitate that information according to the world's standards, the world's interpretations and the world's value system. So a lot of times as you listen to the videos that I put out, you might think, this sounds like crazy talk, but the Holy Spirit testifies to it, but man, it sounds like crazy talk. And so it might take a minute to kind of internalize and integrate what it is that I'm saying. It might take a minute to internalize and integrate what you're reading in scripture, or what the Holy Spirit is talking with you about. Sometimes I even say on videos, this sounds like foolish talk, doesn't it? Sounds like crazy talk, but I'm substantiating it with scripture. It's n I'm not saying anything that the scriptures don't say. Even as I'm talking about a concept like the inner child work that I teach you to do, I explain to you how the way that we do that stands on scripture, how the way that we are doing it is providing healing and restructure of what was supposed to be internalized in the family system that God established. He established a mother and father, a father who goes to work, a mother who is in the home with the children, who is spiritually nourishing and teaching her children, sanctifying her children with the word of God. But when the family system broke down and women thought, oh, we can have it all, we can be just like men and do anything that a man can do, and this modern family, worldly family system was established, there was a breakdown in that family unit that got established for good reason. Children need to have a parent at home, a mother at home who is not overburdened by trying to have it all, trying to prove that she can do everything that a man can do and raise children and put food on the table and keep a home. That's lunacy. That's insanity. God didn't impose those burdens on us. We impose those burdens on us. And so the family structure has been broken down. It's not enough to just have children who are alive. You know, a lot of times parents are congratulating themselves because their children are alive, because they keep their children alive. That's not enough. We're supposed to be raising spiritually healthy children. We're supposed to be raising God's children to him. He has entrusted us to do that. And I know a couple who is, um, has just found out that they're expecting a baby. And the wife has been telling me for some time that God has been talking with her about the importance of family and that he has set her apart and entrusted her to bring babies into this world. They're not concerned about this worldly idea of family planning taking medications in order to control and stop what God knows is good. They understand that God has entrusted his people to bring children into this world, to be a vessel to bring his children into this world and raise those children up to him. And if that is indeed what they are doing, they are going to be blessed by him because God blesses what he ordains. If he has ordained his people to bring children into the world and raise them up to him, that's our role here. It's not about us. It's not about our lives of self and everything that we want to do and the vacations we want to take and all of that. He has entrusted us to bring, be a vessel, to bring children into the world and to be two parents who raise those children up right to him. You know, a lot of times young parents get flack from their family members because they're not doing things in a correct order according to the family's worldly standards. 
and that family is concerned and living a life out of fear rather than faith and understanding that God has called his people to fulfill certain roles. He has called his people to populate the earth and raise those children up correctly to him. That, if, that might be the only role you have. And let me tell you something, raising children to God is a huge role that carries so much honor and it is a blessing. That is what scripture tells us. So I want you to know that you do not have to, and in fact, you are called not to validate yourself by what other people think about what you're doing, by what other people think about your message, by your popularity, by how you belong to this world. You are not called to do any of that. You are called to understand who God has destined you to be, who he has ordained you to be before the creation of this world, and to hold fast to his will and his ministry to you. And the world is going to come against that. Even the world within families, even the world within churches, even the world within counterfeit Christians. But you have to be able to hold on to what you know is true, what you know is right and correct, and what God is telling you by his spirit and by his word. You know, I've been struggling with something, and I, and I talked a little bit about what was happening with me within my body yesterday in a video on body metaphor because I wanted to illustrate um, how to do the body metaphor work. And as I spoke about the metaphor that God was speaking to me through my body and my feelings and things that he had been raising, the picture that he was weaving together, one of the things that I discussed and began to become aware of is that I was starting to distract myself because God's spoken certain things to me. He's talked to me about the time, the times that we're living in. There's a lot that he talks to me about, but he doesn't necessarily give me the entire picture because guess what? I'm not capable of holding the entire picture. Part of that has to do just with my capacity to hold all of the information that God has. I'm not God. And another part of that has to do with what he's building in me in terms of faith and staying within the correct posture of conformity to him. And another part of that has to do with my flesh. He's not going to dole out information to me so that I can then go run on my flesh and do what I please with that information or even interpret that information according to my own carnality. He gives me a piece at a time and he requires me to stay close to him if I want to be used by him. So even though I am used by him, he gives me wisdom and understanding. He knows the limitations that I have in my flesh. He knows what is good. You remember that Eli had some sons that were really engaging in some wicked things, very wicked behaviors. They were sleeping with the women at the temple. They were threatening and oppressing people when they were bringing sacrifices to God, coveting those sacrifices for themselves, saying that if people didn't give them what they wanted, that they would take it by force. And God was not having it. He was not happy about what was going on there. And he told Samuel what was going to happen. And Eli said, tell me what God told you. So Samuel let Eli know, look, your sons are going to be destroyed. And Eli said to Samuel, he's the Lord. Let him do what is good. Eli didn't try to fight against that. He had already tried to correct his sons and they would, would not be corrected. And Eli's attitude was correct. God is the Lord. Let him do what he knows is good because we don't know what's good. So now that we've established that we don't know what's good, I want to talk with you about how we validate ourselves in this world. You know, we've picked up certain things from being raised here, how our parents raised us, how society has raised us. And this is the unfortunate thing. When you don't have two parents who are in the roles that God established, they're overburdened and they come home and those children have been being raised in some school system all day and then maybe daycare and then parents come home and they think that their responsibility is really just keeping their kids alive like bathing them feeding them putting them to bed brushing their teeth waking them up and doing it all over again but those children are receiving no spiritual nourishment 
the nourishment that they are supposed to be, that God established, that they're supposed to be receiving all day from a godly mother, a godly father, a slower paced life, a family that relies on God, that is personally accountable and has relationship with God, these things go out the window. We don't even have a way in which to understand how to relate. We don't end up internalizing this ability to relate with ourselves, which I've explained to you in many videos comes from those early relationships, being taught, being spiritually nourished, relating with someone who is present, who's been bestowed godly wisdom because they actually have a relationship with God who's able to teach that to their child by the way that they relate with them and the way that they shepherd them to God and the way that that child sees through example how that parent is relating with God. In the absence of that, we do not internalize a way of relating with ourselves correctly, what God has established in terms of personal accountability. And we end up thinking things like, this craziness that's being taught in churches of superficial healing, that we can scream out a spirit, that there's nothing we need to do in order for a curse to be broken. We just engage in some witchcraft prayer because that's essentially what's going on. Witchcraft prayers of like breaking a curse, some ritualized prayer. An absolute absence of personal accountability. We don't get what God has written in his word, what he's established with his, with his people, what he raised his people to understand so that they could raise his children to understand. You see in scripture that God commands certain things, certain festivals and appointed times and these sorts of things. You do these and you do it from generation to generation and you teach your children to do the same and you teach your children, children what's right and they will not depart from it. That's what God established with his people. But that is not what's going on. And in the process of losing that, we have lost the natural consequences of living this in our lives. The natural consequences being that we have an internalized representation of what this is. So that when I start talking with people about doing this inner child work and how these things did not develop because of the increase in wickedness, people start wondering, what is this? Is this new age? What is this personal accountability she speaks of? But didn't God come here and do that for us? No, of course he didn't. God does not engage us in a codependent relationship. There are things that he expects from us and he does not do for a man, woman, or child what that man, woman, or child were designed to do for themselves in personal accountability. And so now we have this crazy talk that's going on in churches that we have ingested as being normal and what God's word actually says about personal accountability is crazy talk. It's foolishness. It must be new age because I've never heard of this. You know what? It's really sad. I received such a lovely message yesterday from someone. I'm not going to name them because um, when someone emails me, I'm just going to assume that they've emailed me because they want their, you know, detail. They want to remain anonymous, at least to the channel. But I had been talking with this person and they were asking me questions like this, like, is this new age? Is this, you know, does this come from, uh, you know, something of the world? And so I was explaining to them how um, inner child work as we do it, not as is done in the world, as we do it, as I teach you in Heart Known series, how it stands on biblical principles, how it helps you to develop this personal accountability, personal relationship that should have been developed within a healthy home, within a home that God established. But due to the increase in wickedness, that this has been lost. And their concern had been that this would be new age. They were trying to discern, which by the way, good on them. You should be doing that. You got to be discerning and making sure. I'm not above questioning. You can ask me any question and I will answer it. And you can ask me where that is in scripture and I will answer that because it's important that God's shepherds are not so arrogant that they just expect you to believe because they said so. 
That's not how I roll. So good on him for asking these questions. And he said to me yesterday um, that he did not, uh, he waited a little bit, a little while because he was still kind of like not sure, which again, I want to tell you, good on him. If you don't feel sure, don't just do it because I said, you sit with the Holy Spirit. You discern that by the Spirit, not by me. I'm not God. All I am is a shepherd of what God established. So he ended up starting Heart Known Series and has been doing it for just a few days. And he wrote me to let me know how much it's helping him. So first of all, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who send me emails or messages here on YouTube. It's such a blessing to me to hear how this is helping you. It really is. Your testimony is everything. So if you have a testimony to share, you share that as God um, you know, puts it on you to share that. But thank you so much for your encouraging words. I really appreciate that. Second of all, I'm, you know, sharing this with you, what this uh, person and I have talked about and the concerns that they had before starting this work, because these are understandable concerns, because we've lost what God established for his people. And also because the shepherds who are supposed to be teaching these very things, teaching about personal accountability, they've sold out. How many people in churches are even talking about end times? There are people who say, I don't talk about end times because people don't want to hear it, because it's irrelevant to us. I mean, since when is anything in the Bible irrelevant to us? I'll tell you why this is happening, because these churches are doing research to see what people want to hear. And that's what they're preaching because they're more concerned about their livelihood that they don't entrust to God. And so they're preaching heresy. They're preaching a false doctrine, superficial healing. What does God say? Is there no balm in Gilead? Why is there no healing for the daughter of my people then? He's mocking them. He's saying, why is there no healing if you're so wise? If you're such an expert and such a teacher, why are people not healing then? Because these people are speaking on their own authority for their own glory. They have no healing themselves, so they cannot share a testimony of true healing. So they just impose all of these superficial rules and false self-help, I'm not promoting self-help. I am promoting personal accountability that is required in order for your healer to actually heal you. When God says, if my people, when I send these things, if my people who are called by my name will, dot, 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 <laughs> just in the fact that he says will, means I'm going to tell you what you need to do in personal accountability in order to be healed. And what does he say? Put on sackcloth and ashes, turn from your wicked ways, repent, humble yourselves, return to me. Then I will heal you. I've said to you in many videos that we have an if-then covenant with God. Just in that statement alone is an if-then agreement. If my people who are called by my name will turn to me, reduce themselves in sackcloth and ashes and humility, repent, turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal them. Salvation, by the way, is synonymous with healing in scripture. That is an if-then statement. It is an if-then agreement. Has God's heart suddenly changed in the covenant? He says, if my people who are called by my name will do these things, then I will heal them. His covenant is exactly the same. If you do these things, then I will heal you. If you do these things, then you will be saved. If you obey me, I will not put on you any of the diseases that I put on the wicked Egyptians. I am the Lord who heals you. So whose standards are you living by? Whose standards have you been validating yourself by? And the question that this person asked me was, 
why can't we just pray to God and have him heal us? Why won't he just heal us? And it's a very good question. It's an extremely good question, even though it's extremely sad to me that we even have to ask this. And the reason we have to ask it is because of the baloney that's being taught in churches by worthless shepherds and because there's no family structure that God established. There's no spiritual nurturing going on in homes. We don't know what our parents expect. If then rules are not being established in homes, children are just being screamed at or grounded for not being enough or they're being completely neglected to raise themselves. There's no teaching. And if there's no teaching and there's no nourishment and there's no example and there's no relationship, that does not become internalized when we are children And we certainly don't feel any need for that to become internalized as adults until we're brought low by God, until we realize that there is no healing. So understand, this is why the increase in illness, this is why the increase in global warming, this is why we have an increase in distress because it's the only way for God to bring us in. It's the only way for us to be Willing to return to him is to experience enough pain to where that's all we can do. Because we've run the garbage teachings into the ground and we have to face the fact that it's not working. So I shared with you yesterday that I was really struggling with some feelings that I was having and I had started to kind of distract myself. There's things that God has talked to me about. But he didn't, he doesn't give me the whole picture. And in fact, (laughs) something that really is very frustrating for me because of my flesh, but that I need to learn and all of us need to learn how to tolerate sitting with the information God has given us and waiting and hoping and having faith and holding on to what he's done and who he is and waiting on him to do what he has said he's going to do. Look, it's not easy. It's hard. And sometimes I get antsy. And although it's not a sin for me to, you know, look at the news and see, okay, what's going on in in the world right now, always discerning by the Holy Spirit, not listening to the news to tell me what to think, or getting into their many conspiracy theories about right versus left. We don't need to get into that. There's only the truth and what God established. But we have to use that correctly. And so though we live in the world, we cannot become of the world. Though we have the news and we can see what's being observed, be careful not to get into people's theories about why things are happening. Because we know that there is a one sovereign God who is in control of everything that's happening. So we read, when we are reading the news, we always need to be standing on that truth. It's not some man that's setting this up or a government that's setting this up. It's God. He's fulfilling his words. He's just using the tools he has destined to fulfill his word. And I had started to feel really frustrated. And in the absence of hearing the next step from God of what he's doing and this sort of thing, in the absence of being patient, getting still, getting deeper into him, bringing more discipline to my flesh when I'm feeling frustrated rather than seeing, rather than feeling that feeling and then saying, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to look and see what's going on in the news. Listen, it's hard. But when we start feeling frustrated and we want to know what's going on, we need to turn to God. We need to discipline our flesh and use that as a signal that, We need to return and get in deeper with him, not succumbing to the compulsion to start trying to figure things out. And it's a fine line. That can be an easy temptation to get into, especially when God's speaking to us about certain things that are coming together. So this is part of what God was chastising me on and disciplining me and bringing me in closer to him. He doesn't allow me to get very far before he, you know, gives me some 
significant consequences so that I come back to him. Thankfully, he has taught me how to recognize these things and how to come back to him truly, how to truly return to him, how to truly rend my heart to him rather than coming back to him and praying the spirit away, yelling the spirit away or whatever it is, you know, demanding that he make me feel better. So the severity of my grief and the frequency of my grief and the intensity of what he sends, it really is not that significant as it was when he had to bring me to the death, to the brink of death for me to actually go, oh, you're talking to me. Oh, there's something I need to do here. And this is part of what I teach you how to do in Heart Known series, how to truly rend your heart to him, how to truly examine yourself and return to him. Now, here's what happens. Here's part of the phenomenon of that. When I stop engaging in the distraction and the compulsion, now I have to feel the feelings that have been triggering and compelling me to engage in distraction and avoid what I'm feeling. So now I'm faced with that and I need a way of being able to process that or I'm going to return to the compulsion because I don't have any other option. Many of you contact me and you say, I've tried this, this, and this, and I tried this therapy and that therapy. Some people even contact me telling me what therapy I'm going to do with them. And I don't play that game. The reason you are not healing is because you don't know what the alternative is. You don't have a replacement. So a lot of you have been working really hard in self-help and therapies of the world and nothing's getting better and you're really suffering and you're really struggling to do that work. And I know you're doing it because I was one of those people. I was also doing that work every day and nothing was getting better. I kept going back to the old behavior. I kept feeling compelled to be with the same kinds of men to attract that same spirit over and over. I kept engaging, even though I was very aware of my tendency to try to control people, places, and things, I kept engaging in that same thing. I would be compelled by a feeling of fear and spirit of fear because I didn't understand the nature of what was going on inside of me. I didn't understand what was a spirit versus a feeling. I didn't have a replacement. I didn't know what God required. And if I knew what God required, I didn't know how to do it because I didn't understand what I was struggling with. I needed a way to do that. And that is what Heart Known Series teaches you. Heart Known Series teaches you as you would have been taught in a healthy spiritual family. But there's no way for anybody else to do that work for you. No one's going to raise you. Now, developmentally, according to the design God has given you, you have to do this work within yourself in order to build what should have been internalized. Now, look, in order for you to pick up what God, who God has called you to be, the purpose for which he set you apart, you're going to need this. You are going to need to develop this somehow, some way, or you are going to continue to return to the world to validate you. And you need to understand that God doesn't validate you as the world validates you. So in the midst of me feeling these feelings that I was trying to avoid, I began coming face to face with what happens to every single one of God's servants, what's going to happen to you if you are in him. And that is, I absolutely must be in communication with God or I'll not understand the persecution I'll not understand why I'm hated and unpopular, why it is that I don't have many people receiving this message, why it is I don't have likes or popularity, why it is that I'm rejected, have little strength, I'm afflicted, why am I being shadow banned on this channel? Because here's the truth in God. You know, we've gone all this lifetime thinking that, oh, I posted a good message because I got this many likes and I got these new followers or subscribers. 
if we're validating ourselves based on the way that we've been taught in the world by the world, we're going to be handed over to deception. Do you think people like Joel Osteen and Kenneth Copeland, do you think that they are handed over to delusion and easily able to justify themselves because they have so many followers and because they ha are making so much money and because their message is extremely popular. It's a very dangerous thing when we start identifying and validating ourselves based on the standards of the world, because quite frankly, God's standards are completely opposite. The world is in opposition to God. If you were of the world, the world would have accepted your message. If you were of the world, the world would love you. But as it is, you are not of the world. Therefore, if they hate you, remember that they hated Christ first. If you are persecuted, rejoice in the same way they persecuted the prophets before you. If you're afflicted and you're being disciplined, Remember that God disciplines those he loves. Don't fall back. Don't slide back by envying the wicked. Remember the fate of the wicked. Remember David said that in Psalm 73. I didn't understand until I entered your sanctuary, Lord. Then you showed me the fate of the wicked. So again, I say to you that you cannot validate yourself based on the word and you cannot validate yourself apart from God because it was only when David entered the sanctuary of God that God then responded to him in the way that David needed him to respond in the way that only God knows his creation and knows how to speak to his creation. And as only God can speak to us in the spirit by his spirit, because he is spirit. And when we hear from him, when he responds to us, when he answers our cry for help, we know. And that is how our faith is built. We know that no one could have talked to us like that. We know that that comes from God. We know that no one could have put these pieces together for us because that is not human wisdom. It is not wisdom that comes from us. You don't need to be liked by man. You're not here to make friends. But you do indeed need affirmation. You just need to get it from God. And so as I illustrated to you here, when you start to feel that feeling of fear, when you start to feel compelled, when you start to feel like, you know what, God's taking too long. I'm going to go see if I can try to figure out what God is doing. Gosh, that sounds so ridiculous and dumb. But I'm being honest. Sometimes that's where my flesh takes me. And because God loves me, and because of what he has me doing, he doesn't let me go there very long. And yet, you need to understand, I have personal accountability in that. When he gives me that feeling of fear, I need to correct myself. I need to turn from what I'm doing and turn to him. I cannot continue to succumb to the compulsions of my flesh and be in him. He's not going to affirm me even in that space. I have to return to him and I need a way to do that. I would be a terrible, worthless servant to you, worthless shepherd to you if I did not give you a viable way to do that. When I talk with you about Heart Known series and A Soul Aligned, you need to understand that I'm not talking about these books for me, for my glory, for money. I've already offered those books to you for free. I've offered these teachings to you on these videos for free. So if God's speaking into it and he's testifying to the truth of what I say, there is no excuse for anyone to not say, then say, God's testifying. Let me then pray and ask him if this is what I should be doing. If this is the next step on my healing journey, I've offered you the books for free if you can't afford them. They are affordable and accessible online, but if you can't afford them, no questions asked. I will provide them to you. And the reason I'm providing them to you is has nothing to do with me. I have already reconciled that this message is not, is not popular, is not gonna be popular. 
this is not going to pay my bills. God is going to pay my bills if I'm doing, if I am a worthy servant, if I utter worthy words, if I'm speaking his truth, if I'm following his spirit and what he has told me to do, not what I'm making up in my own mind. So I want you to understand very clearly that I offer these things to you so that you have a way of doing what I'm telling you must be done so that you have an alternative to what you've been doing. And I want to tell you what the goal is here, what my goal is. I want to make that goal very, very clear. My goal is not just for your healing. My goal is not just for you to stop experiencing suffering. My goal is not the goal that you assume is the goal from a psychologist because I'm not coming to you as a psychologist. I'm coming to you as a shepherd of God. The words I speak are not on the authority of psychology. The words I speak are on the authority of God and the testimony he's built in me, which is in opposition to the field that I went into. Nevertheless, God has used that in order to speak my testimony, in order to help you understand, I did this for over, for almost 30 years. I engaged in various different types of therapy. I went to graduate school and got a doctorate and it does not heal. It does not work, nor does it come from the goals of your creator. It does not speak on the authority of the creator. It does not understand the design he's given his creations. It does not understand his purposes in his creations. It does not understand what God established in order to heal. Nor does it care because God already told us that those who do not speak on his authority, those who speak on their own authority do so do so for their own glory and there is no truth in them. Do you understand that? That is the reason people are not healing because they don't speak on the authority of God. They speak on their own authority for their own glory and there is no truth in them. This is my goal and this is the goal of God as according to his scriptures that there is a purpose for which he set you apart before the creation of the world. You have to be activated in that purpose or he will remove your lampstand which is the testimony that he's building you for that purpose. The testimony lampstand, which he is going to then place his light on and speak through. That's what he does in these videos with me. That's what he intends to do with you. He intends to light you at some point. It is not of use to him for you to continue to be satanically attacked. You've been brought low in order to be built because you wouldn't return any other way. You've been brought into position so that you could actually receive true healing because otherwise you wouldn't have felt a need for it. And it's also possible that he's let you kind of flounder around because first of all, that's what you chose. And second of all, he wants to show you the difference between what the world offers and what he, only he can do. That's going to be part of your testimony. So my goal is to help you to understand how to heal, how to receive his ministry, how to walk with him all day long, not just in this morning prayer and evening prayer and before you eat, all day long as he intended for you to be a vessel and to be occupied by him all day long. That is my goal because I know from personal experience that until that happens, you won't be used by him. You can't be used by him because if the voice that is occupying you the majority of the day is your own voice, how can you possibly receive his ministry and be built for the purpose and and receive the purpose for which he set you apart? It's not about you creating some sort of ministry. This is about the ministry God has destined you for. It's not by your power or might. It's by God's spirit that he will accomplish this. And so I share with you the struggles that I have. I share with you the testimony that I have. 
I share with you the experiences that I have going through this because one day it's going to matter to you. One day you're going to remember what I say about what I'm going through right now and it's going to matter to you. If you believe in the message that I am sharing on this channel, if God's testifying to it, please do yourself a favor and get Heart Known series. If you can't afford it, email me and I will send it to you. But I want you to get that book and I want you to start experiencing what I've been talking about. True healing, substantial healing that comes from your creator. For those of you who are listening, those of you who have started this journey, if this is helping you and this is working, your testimony matters. I am not asking you as the world asks you. I'm not asking you as a church asks you to give me money, to pay tithing, to do. I am not asking you for anything for myself. I'm asking you for the purpose of God's people, share your testimony. I'm asking you for the glory of God, share your testimony. Share on the channel, on the, in the comments section, share with your family, share with your friends, share with those who need this healing. Share the videos with people because as I mentioned to you, and you can easily see this, if you go on to the channel and you look at my videos, you're gonna see that there was a time when my videos were getting 300 to 500 views per video. So this is not a conspiracy theory or something that I've come up with. If you look at a certain time, you will see a steep drop off from about three to 500 views per video to about 20 to 50. And the reason for that, we all know, because the message is being blocked. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's not about people or anything like that. This is about the spirit that is blocking the message. And I know that God can and will share the message. His will is not going to be hindered or blocked. So I don't feel afraid about this. I'm not worried about it for my own glory. In fact, validating myself by God's standards, I know that he already warned me. He already warned me in his word that if they hate you, remember that they hated me first. But I do believe that within the body of Christ, we have a responsibility to share what has been freely given to us. So if God is testifying to this message, if he's testifying to the videos, if he's testifying through the work that you're doing in the books, what I'm saying to you is share your testimony, share the message. And this is not because God is only capable of doing that through you. It is because that is your responsibility and I desire that to be to your credit, that you are standing at your post and you're doing what you're supposed to do. I really hope that this message has been helpful in helping you to understand your role, my goal, God's goal, and also the way that you're going to need to validate yourself if you're really in God. You got to validate yourself in him because the world is going to be in opposition to that and it is going to grieve you. So, you know, for example, like when I'm losing the few subscribers that I have, right? If people are rejecting the message, if the message is being blocked, like access to the message is being blocked. Listen, it's kind of hard when that, when you discover that these things are happening and you're poured out every day and you've been poured out for years, writing these books and sharing this message and all of these things are happening. It's hard to then go, oh, you know, I want to rejoice because these things are happening. I know that God says to rejoice and ultimately my heart's going to go there. But the funny thing is, is that concurrently I'm feeling grief. You know, I'm feeling sad over the state of this world, over the state of God's temple and the fact that it's so difficult because of all of the deception in the world for people to even like conceive that what I'm saying is true for me, for them to even conceive that we actually have some sort of a role and responsibility 
in our covenant with Christ, in our healing process, that we don't just scream spirits away, that we don't just pray some uh, ritualized prayer over a cur- to break curses. That's all baloney. And as we understand the scriptures and we're truly seeking God's heart, we see that he has said that there are many things that we are supposed to do. That he has said that the road is narrow, that he has said that few, many are called, but few are chosen. That he has said, you got to pick up your daily cross. That it's easier for someone to go through, uh, you know, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. There are so many things that he has established in scripture. And he's always talking about if then. So if that's the heart of God... It's absurd for us to think that his covenant is somehow different from his heart. His heart is in his covenant. So it does grieve me that people cannot accept that message, that they reject it, that this is where we're at. Concurrently, so I'm, I'm going to say and, not but, if these things were not happening, if I wasn't being rejected or the message wasn't being rejected, if I wasn't hated, if I wasn't receiving nasty messages, etc., quite frankly, I wouldn't be worthy. There's a reason why the word says worthy to endure persecution. There's a reason why the apostles understood when they were flogged in the synagogues that they had become worthy of enduring persecution for the way, for the cause, for Jesus Christ. So let's become worthy to suffer for him. Thank you so much for listening. Please remember to share your testimony. That's what you have. That's what God has built in you. That is the purpose for which God has set you apart before the creation of the world. And he is going to use you. And as he does, you are going to feel the joy of the Lord. You are going to feel the redemption of your suffering as you watch other people heal. Share that. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.